parallel and perpendicular lines, the basics. So parallel lines, they're lines that basically kind of turn the same way, whatever, they're kind of tilted the same or whatnot. So here's an example of some parallel lines. Here's some more that are horizontal, some vertical, and then here's some that, you know, just different slopes of lines there. But that's the key. That's the key. Parallel lines have the same slope. Remember, the slope is rise over run. It tells you how a line is tilted, how much it's slanted or tilted. Well, if they're tilted or slanted the same way, then they're parallel. They, if you extend them on forever, they never cross each other, right? They go on forever and ever and ever. An example, something like uh, uh, train tracks, except they, they have curves in them, okay? But if they were straight, just imagine they never cross, right? So that's what parallel lines you have, you know, in, in a room, maybe the, the ceiling and the floor parallel. I mean, it, it's construction. It could be one side could be a half inch taller than the other, but ideally it's parallel, right? So then are the top of the board, the bottom of the board, the two sides of the computer screen, whatever. All right, so perpendicular lines, these make a right angle, 90 degree angle, right? Doesn't matter how they start out or whatever, whether one's vertical, one's horizontal like this here, or, you know, whatever, you know, one's got a positive slope or a negative slope or whatnot. So again, the slope is the key. Perpendicular lines have opposite, which means change the sign. So if it's positive, make it negative, negative, make it positive, and reciprocal. That's a fancy word for flip it. So two-thirds will become three-halves, and then you change it to negative or so on and so forth, okay? So that's the key there for perpendicular lines. So really, this is, again, a very basic video on this, give you some visual examples of it, and then talk about how the slope relates to it because, in, you know, that's what mathematically that's what we have. So, you know, like perpendicular line, like on the computer screen, or the phone you're looking at right down here, this, this, this is probably some sort of right angle down here in the bottom corner here, okay? So... Uh, you know, the side of your phone, the bottom of your phone, the, the side of your computer, the bottom of it, that's perpendicular. The, the top of the door frame and the side of the door frame, if it's a rectangular door, a square door, whatnot. All right. So don't see too many square doors, but most of them are rectangles. Um, but you do have some that have curves and shapes and other things to them, right, that are decorative or, or, or look cool or whatnot. So here, um, really, this is what I want to do. I just want to take this and fill in the slope for these things. So given the slope M... So I give you the slope across here in the top row of this table, all right? And I actually do this on tests at various levels of algebra, sometimes in all my levels of algebra. I will go in and say, hey, here's the slope of a line. Now I want you to tell me the parallel slope. And I use this symbol, which I actually don't know if I've ever seen in a book, but I use that symbol M with the subscript. looks like an 11 kind of close together that's parallel or the perpendicular slope, M perpendicular, okay? So, right, math people are always looking for a shorter way to do something, right? Some people call us lazy. I like to say we're efficient. So, M parallel, M perpendicular. So, remember, parallel slope is the same, and perpendicular slope is change the sign and flip it. So, when I ask this in my classes, I always joke with my students and say, please don't miss this parallel slope line. Even if I try to confuse you and swap the two lines there, don't miss the parallel because parallel is basically copying down, not basically, you copy down the row above it or the, the row you were given, I should say. You copy down the row you were given. So, here, what is the slope that is parallel to the slope of two? It's two. The parallel slope is two. What's the parallel slope to negative five? It's negative five. Because we said parallel lines have the same slope. That means you don't change it. Don't, don't, get, don't try to get tricky. There's nothing tricky about this. What's the parallel slope to two-thirds? Two-thirds. What's the parallel slope to negative one-fourth? Negative one-fourth. Okay, if you don't see this yet, it's because you're looking way too hard. Okay? You're, you're making this way more than it is. What is the parallel slope to one-seventh? One-seventh. What is the parallel slope to zero? Zero. What about negative 11 fifths? Negative 11 fifths. Parallel slope's the same, y'all. So if you're given a slope and asked to find the parallel slope, <laughs> same thing. Just copy now. Boom. Same thing. What is the perpendicular slope? Well, we need to remind ourselves that this 2 is really 2 over 1. So when I flip it, it's 1 over 2, and it becomes negative. Right? So anytime you have a whole number, hey, remind yourself that's over 1. So you can flip it, right? Reciprocal. That's the fancy math word, right? Just reciprocal has, you know, 10 times the number of letters flip it does. So then negative 5 again, this is negative 5 over 1. So if I flip it, it's negative. Oh, and then I make it what? Positive. Right, I got to change the sign and flip it. So that's going to be positive 1 over 5. 
So that's the tricky part of this is for a whole number, you can't just write down 5 to negative 5. It's negative 5 to 1 fifth, right? You've got to change the sign and flip it, put the 1 over it. The next one's a little more obvious. Two-thirds becomes what? Three halves with a negative in front of it. So negative three halves. And then negative one-fourth. If I flip it, that's going to become a positive four over one. But wait a minute, I just write down four, don't I? So, I mean, like this is sort of like a thought cloud, by the way. These are like thought clouds. I just thought about it. I think about it. Would I ever in a million years answer over one? No, you never answer over one. You don't ever answer over one. You simplify it. Four over one is four. So then the next one, one-seventh, if you flip it, it's going to be seven over one, and it's going to become what? Negative. So that's negative seven. So again, that's like a thought cloud, but you never answered over one. The next one, if I'm thinking about it, I think about what? One over zero and change it. But wait a minute. What's any number divided by zero? Undefined. I let my students write U-N-D. U-N-D. And abbreviate, I don't mean the German word unt for and, but undefined, okay? But it's, it's this. So just so we know, just so we've seen it, this is undefined, okay? And I, I, I emphasize the D at the end of that because I have a lot of students write undefined. And don't and they leave the D off. Because I say it so quick, they don't hear it, and I don't write it down sometimes, and, they, and they just, they're just doing what they hear me say. But it's undefined, i got to emphasize the D so that I say it good so you can hear it. All right, because I talk fast sometimes and you, know, you don't hear that sound or whatnot. All right, so then here, the next one, negative 11 fifths, we have 5 over 11. 5 over 11, right? We flip it and we change the sign. So the ones with 1s under them or 0, those, those are a little bit of maybe special in the sense that you don't write a fraction and you're like 7 over 1 or, or something over 0 is undefined. So things that are parallel or perpendicular to each other, 0 and undefined are perpendicular. If you started with undefined, you just need to know that 0 is perpendicular to that, right? So I hope this helps you out with slopes of lines that are parallel or slopes of lines that are perpendicular, okay?